The, the red one, no, we don't want to see a lot of that. These plants wear red well, but not in January in Georgia. And right now, it's a color that Trey Hart doesn't want to see in his strawberry patch. As a producer, what does this tell you about that's happening with your crop when you see one already developed like that? That it's too warm right now. The last month, uh, we were in the, you know, 80s a lot, a lot of days. So I, I prefer to have a nice 60 degree day and a, and a low 40s night would probably just make me smile. But just as much as he knows his crop, Hart also knows the seesaw uncertainty of South Georgia winters. So seeing a few dots of red among the green right now doesn't cause him to panic. Now I will go ahead and tell you that several years ago, we actually had a strawberry pie on Christmas from the patch. So this is not the first time that we've had a, a warm winter where the plants have started going. After more than 20 years growing strawberries on his family's O'Clockney Ridge Farms in Colquitt County, Hart knows the perfect weather recipe needed for the best strawberries. And it's a delicate one months in the making. And we plant the field in October and then it will start to grow. They should get up to a decent, what we call a saucer size, where something in that neighborhood and uh, then I want it to turn cold. I want to go dormant and sit there until sometime end of February going into March where they should come out of dormancy as it warms up. And then we have strawberries about two or three weeks later. But just as too much heat too soon upsets the strawberry growing cycle, it's equally true when temperatures plunge too low once the plants start blooming. Any morning that it's going to be in the neighborhood of 37, 36 degrees, we will need to be up and be out here checking for frost. If there is a frost, we have to have the sprinklers up and running pretty much before the sun starts breaking. Because once it starts breaking, the temperature is going to dip even more and then you, you'll you actually have a little, little freeze damage out here. And if the blooms get frost on them, they will not pollinate. They will turn black and fall off the plant and you won't have a strawberry from that bloom. From the sprinkler heads throughout this field, to the plastic protecting the plants, even to the grass between the rows, everything here serves a purpose. The grass, for example, plays an important role in protecting the strawberries and conserving the soil. The first purpose that we put it out here for is to stop the erosion in the field after we lay the plastic in the ground as bare. Uh, the second thing is it will, it will give us a little bit of, of wind protection out here uh, during parts of the year. But then the final thing is, is as the spring comes along, the grass will die back, will help it along a little bit, but it'll lay down in the middles and keep the sand from splattering up on the beds and getting on the strawberries during rain events in the spring. This estimated two and a half acres of strawberries on O'Clotney Ridge Farms is a rarity, not just in Cockwood County, but across the state. There are only about 200 acres of strawberries grown in the entire state of Georgia. And pretty much all of those strawberries are grown for fresh local market or you pick businesses. O'Clotney Ridge does a little of both, but its primary strawberry market is school districts. We developed our fresh market business where we now do farm to school with the surrounding school systems in our area. Most of the year, Hart and his family keep busy growing peanuts and cotton and tending to cattle. While the strawberries are just a small part of a large operation, Hart says the crop is grown with equal passion and enthusiasm. On the farm, I'm Greg Lloyd.